giants like Netflix and Amazon. Um, these are really hard to talk about. It's hard to believe five years, seven years ago. What were we? Cable, internet, home phone. And you look forward today and it's, you know, if you just look at our Xfinity products and our, and our consumer services division, it's mind blowing not to think then about NBC Universal content, what we're doing with Sky internationally. It's, an, it's amazing. And if you're on our front line today, you've got to know more and more and more about our products and our customers. Um, and we are building those tools to do that. And what we set out to do was sort of measure the impact of that. We call sort of this framework of someone who is a frontline representative interacting with our customers. The, we sort of landed on a variety of key behaviors, right? And those pillars form what we call sales excellence. And when Yaz and I jumped into this about a year ago, we said, I wonder if there's a way to measure that, right? We geek out on data and I think there could be something compelling there. So we looked at our pillars and one of the pillars, and I've talked about this, uh, what are the processes and tools that these folks have to do their jobs? We're constantly thinking about, developing, doing, enhancing, deploying the right products for our people. But are they making the right difference? And what can we learn if we start to look at the intersection of usage and engagement with our different tool sets and our folks meeting their goals. Productivity can be defined in a variety of ways depending on what sales channel you're in. And so that was the challenge that we sort of set out um, to, to really think about can we pull this together and talked about it with Yasmin. And I think when we started to think about the data and the complexity, what goes into that, you're pulling from different sources, right? In the older days, it would be you'd have the SQL query from here in this database and this one, and then join your data set in Excel and then run a nifty pivot table. And oh my God, right? Who's, it's, it's mind blowing, at least for me. You guys probably all know how to do that really easily, but it, it's complex. And so that was the challenge that we pitched to Yaz, and she's going to tell you sort of what we did to bring that store together. Indeed. Thank you, Jim. So as Jim, uh, carefully laid out, this is what we started with, right? We had uh, an idea of measuring sales excellence. We knew uh, that we had different sales enablement tools, including our reporting tools, our coaching tool, uh, as well as our lead management tool. Um, all of those tools are part of our sales, are part of the sales, Salesforce suite, which means the data resides within the Salesforce ecosystem. We live in the world of Tableau and Tableau. Well, at the time when we started this, I did not know about Tableau Prep. So I'll tell you a little story about this. I knew Tableau desktop, but not Tableau Prep. So I knew that ultimately I was going to do the analysis in Tableau uh, desktop. And the idea was bring the data out of, Salesfor uh, out of Salesforce into Tableau so that we can identify the best practices in terms of engagement and productivity, right? Um, identify where the laggards are so that we can engage with the sales channels and the training team to uh, share those best practices to drive adoption, right? So what you are actually seeing is a full cycle where we get data out of Salesforce, bring it in Tableau to identify those best practices and use those best practices to drive adoption of Salesforce tools full cycle. Now, the reason I, I mentioned that I, at the time I didn't know uh, Tableau Prep is because um, I thought that I was going to have to manage all that, that data in Excel. The current setup for our Salesforce ex exporting of data is that you download it as a CSV file. Right? You, there's no live connection between Salesforce and Tableau. I cannot do a direct connection. Not so yet. Which, not yet. Hopefully it's in their roadmap. I will make sure that I put that feedback in there, right? So in my mind, I thought, oh my God, I have to go and download for every single one of those tools, the utilization data into Excel, create a new data set, do the pivot and use a whole bunch of VLOOKUPs, right? Create a new data set and bring it as a CSV in Tableau. And I was talking with our Tableau team uh, and uh, learned that there's such something called Tableau Prep, which I thought, oh my God, this is going to save my life. Because I'm going to admit in front of a huge audience, I am not a SQL person. 
And I'm she just admitted that in front of her boss. Yes, I did. So. I, hopefully, I'm not the only one, right? So I know enough to do what I need to do, but this was a big enough job that I, 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 I knew that it was going to be a limitation. Yeah. So Tableau Prep literally saved our lives, my life more specifically, uh, because once I learned how it worked, I realized that I could do the same drag and drop that I can do in Tableau and bring and federate the data together in ways that would uh, actually speed up what, uh, what needed to be uh, created. Are there folks who have used Tableau Prep? Cool. All right. Maybe we have time. It's, I think when you're in a room with folks across different industries, it's always neat to just sort of understand and hear about how others are using. So if we have time, it'd be great to maybe share some ideas at the end. Yes, that would, that, that would be great. Um, and I'll tell you a quick story. We have a slide at the end about the reasons to believe. Um, and I'm a big, I'm very bullish about Tableau Prep for one, the reason that I told you, I don't know SQL. Um, I know a lot of other languages. I'm teaching myself SQL, but at the time I didn't, right? Um, so this is the Tableau Prep flow. This is the flow that I built in Tableau Prep, bringing together the, uh, in the engagement data, the tool engagement data, and the performance data for all of the months that we were interested in, joining the data, and creating the output that became the input to the dashboard uh, that allowed us to put it against the, the matrix, the matrix that um, Jim shared, shared earlier as part of the analytics framework. Now, the quick story about this is that I could do this, I learned to do this in just a couple of days with the help of Laura Record, who is part of the Tableau team. She took the time to show me the basics of it, and then I just ran with it which was awesome, right? Because I could visualize the data along the way, I could do the validation, and I could scale it uh, immediately. Can uh, I tell a quick story? Yes, please do. So, um, Yasmin had built out this proof of concept. We socialized it with a couple of our channel leaders, other folks, good response. And Yasmin was out of the office one day, and my boss comes in and said, hey, you know that stuff you're doing where you're looking at you know, usage of our tools and productivity. Do you think you can refresh the data so that we can see it for Q1 for a meeting I have tomorrow morning? I was like, holy crap. So I call up Laura. Laura is Laura here by chance? She had a session at the same time. Uh, got it. Um, called up Laura and I said, Laura, I'm in a pinch. You asked me to talking about this thing, Tableau Prep. I had to be honest with you. I, I had not spend any time with it. She's driving this. I, I said, what am I going to do? She said, don't worry. Are you available this afternoon? I said, yeah. So she, so she calls. We have an hour call. And I'm telling you, I'm not exaggerating. I had never opened the tool. And if Yaz is a SQL querying beginner, I am a SQL querying infant. And so Laura spent an hour with me walking through all of these different pieces and in the performance, those are each different sources of data from each sales channel. And this is all of your utilization. And you got to get in there and check this out because you can click right on some of these joins. You pull down. It does the matching for you. If there's a conflict, it tells you which data set it is. You go back. I did get a little bit of help to find some of the source data. But you go back, and I was able to do it, right? And so, um, yes, yeah, means not exaggerating when she says this thing is a lifesaver. Um, we're really um, grateful for it. So. Hopefully next time we're all together, there are many more Tableau prep usage hands that go up. So. Indeed, indeed. So this is the output of that flow in desktop. Now every dot on this, uh, in, this dashboard, in this dashboard represents a human being. So remember, I'm a connector of data and people. And what I mean by that is that behind every data point in the business, there's a human story. So I use the data to find where to focus the attention, but the most important part is to get behind the data to understand what the people's story is. And so in this case, remember, we are interested in finding the best practices and identify where there's reason for growth, where, there, where there's opportunity for go, growth. So again, on the x-axis, you're looking at engagement with a tool, and the x-axis is performance to goals. And uh, the way to look at this data is that the upper right-hand quadrant 
are the folks who are doing best at both, right? They're highly engaged and they're highly performing, i.e. these are the guys who are uh, guys and gals who uh, have the best practices, uh, which, which uh, i.e. we need to go find them and go talk to them to find, find out how they're doing, what they're doing, why they're doing what they're doing, share that with the sales channels, and share that with the training team in order to, and the communications team, in order to package that and share it with the rest of the, uh, of the sales force uh, that is in any of the other three quadrants. Make sense? So in this case, uh, we wanted to make sure that we put a face and a voice to this concept. Because as much as we had um, kind of socialized this framework, we knew that it was going to, in order for it to stick for the leaders, because this was a new concept, right? Um, in order for it to stick to, to the leaders, it was important to put a face and a voice to it. So we identified the, we identified a, uh, a supervisor uh, who, in this, in, in this quadrant, which, which is what this icon is, and worked with the leaders in that channel to get in touch with him. His name is Chris. So Chris is part of our direct sales team. He's a supervisor of, of sales rep who knocked on doors. So they canvass neighborhoods and knock on doors to sell our products to customers. This is a very difficult job. If you have never uh, done it, please appreciate. It's a very difficult job because nine times out of 10, probably nine and a half times out of 10, they, the, nobody answers or they, re, they get denied. Right, um, and so we but, reached but out. I, I'm sorry, we're like a color commentating team, right? You're like please, doing the please go ahead. And I'm the goofy color, color commentator. But so you're right; it's a hard job, but it, it's one that you know we're having success with. We've figured out how to really target this channel um, in an effective way. And what you see is the business that we do generate tends to be customers who. Um, take more of our lines of business, um, they um, churn less, and um, we are um, in year three now of our customer experience transformation where the Net Promoter System, NPS, is uh, our metric of experience success. And this channel drives significant positive NPS, um, creating great customer experiences. And if you think about it, it's when you have that conversation in person a level of trust gets built. Um, so it has means right, very difficult work, um, but, um, but, but rewarding and, and really positive for the business nonetheless. Thank you. So called Chris and found out a little bit more information about him, because I wanted to find out what was special about how he did what he did. Turns out that he's been at Comcast for a couple of years, but he also came from um, an industry where uh, the type of work that he was doing was actually helping with uh, his success as a leader. And what, we, what, what brought our attention to him was that he was highly uh, engaged with our reporting tool. So he's in this upper right quadrant right here. He's highly engaged with our coaching tool. He also was highly engaged with our lead management tool. And it turns out that he was number, uh, number five national, he was ranked nationally number five. Hands down, a uh, demonstration of uh, sales excellence as, as, as we have it described. So reached out, have a con had a conversation with him, and it was one of the best insight that nothing in the data would have showed, right? Uh, and this is a way to, uh, this is an important piece for us because Sorry, there's an audio to this. There's an audio to this that uh, I can just speak. I, I can just speak to. Uh, this is an important piece because, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the data guides you to where to focus your attention, but it's important to actually pick up the phone and talk to people. And this is one of those examples. Uh, so I will. You can read the slide, but the best example that Chris gave uh, when I talked with him was that he every morning he opens the, the reports that we build. And what he does is that he keeps it on his, on, his, uh, on his computer open. And he refreshes it every hour. 
And what he does, what he told me was that he realizes that his guys are in, out there by themselves and he's not with them because he cannot be with everybody every day, right? But he's even more conscious of the fact that for the new hires, a new person starting is even more nervous about doing this job the first time, especially after training. So he uses the report to find out when the guy, the new hire, has their first sale. And when the person has the first sale, he picks up the phone and calls them. And this is how he makes sure that the person, the new hire, knows that he's there with them in spirit, even though he's not there with the person in person, right? So human connection using data, and one of the ways he does that is by having those reports available to him as, uh, on, on an hourly basis. And of course, everything else derives from that. Uh, he takes his job as a leader really uh, seriously, and he uses those reports to understand what those, what those areas of opportunities are, and again, uses that to coach. And as you can see, uh, as you remember from the previous slide, he's also very engaged with our coaching tool. So everything really flows uh, in, in, in terms of how he leverages the different sales, sales enablement tools. Um, the moral of the story here is that we, couldn't, we would not have been able to find Chris without this approach of overlaying performance over engagement with the tools and then reaching out to a couple of people, in this case we're just talking about Chris, to understand how they do what they do. I had shared this work with our leaders a couple times and before we found Chris. And I think at that point it was, okay, here comes the data guy with his, you know, his charts and you know, we showed those, those quad, the wonderful quad maps and analyses that Yasmin had done. And folks nodded heads, so yeah, there's something to this, and we think that there's, there's goodness here, keep, keep going. But when we shared Chris, that was when everyone was like, oh, I get it, I get it. I get why this is something we ought to be doing. I get why finding folks like Chris in all of our sales channels is great. Celebrate his wins, share what Chris is doing with others, and get them inspired by why these tools are so critical to, to their business. And you know, what I'll say to everyone here is, you, you know, we are all data um, practitioners, um, but what I always like to say in a big crowd like this of folks who, who uh, work, work data and analysis the way that we do is don't lose sight of the fact, no matter what you do and what industry you're in, that a data point is a person. The data point is a customer, an employee, someone who is doing something whether it's investing in your services, paying a monthly fee for your services, deciding to fly your airline, deciding to invest in your brokerage house, um, those are people. And what I think is great is when you keep that in mind, this, the job is more fun. Mm -hmm. you, you, you don't have that conversation with yourself around how does data and analysis you know, tie back to the mission of the company? Well, every data point in an, in an analysis is tied to the mission of the company because it's our customers and it's our people. So don't lose sight of that. I think that's an important thing. And as we continue to think about driving a data-driven culture, not just to Comcast, but wherever you are, um, I really think that's going to be a, an important piece of it is, is making sure we're connected to that human element. And like I said, we, once we found Chris, that was like, all right, can we do this for our channel? So. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Uh, I think I skipped one. So in practice, uh, we just talked about Chris, but in practice we have this information across all of our channels. Um, we, uh, what we just walked you through is applicable across all those channels, across all of the tools that we have. The right-hand quadrant is still the green one here, uh, where you identified best practices. Um, there are a, a sales, sales rep who have high performance in the but still do not use the tools. There's a different type of conversation to engage with them, right? There are people who uh, have low performance and don't engage with any of the tools. <coughs> different set of conversation. And then there's the, uh, there's the complementary um, who have low performance and have high utilization of the tools, right? And maybe part of a transition into any of the other parts of the grid. Uh, the, one of the other things that we do is we partner with the sales channels, as Jim mentioned, to uh, continue to align with their strategy, but also to um, engage with them to interpret the results 
and make them actionable because they know their channels. They are the experts. We, are bring, we, are, we bring the insight to them and bring that uh, to create a partnership to, to, drive, to drive change and work, as I mentioned earlier, with the communications and the training team uh, to, um, to help bring awareness. So case in point, uh, more recently, the, the, the way this work has evolved was is that uh, the same channel, the direct sales channel um, that Chris is part of, um, recently decided to revamp their reporting portfolio. And that revamping included uh, consolidating a lot of the reports that they had because, as you know, a lot of times, there's just a proliferation of, of reports that are not all used to the same extent. And uh, so one of the key metrics that they were going for in terms of measuring success of this consolidation was utilization, right? So they want to just kind of understand how many more um, the utilization of those reports over, over time. And so this work, because we are already engaged with them, we partner to overlay performance on utilization. Same principle, right? And the idea there is you don't, utilization is great, but ultimately it should lead to a change, an improvement at least, uh, in, in performance. And what we, uh, what we did is the same principle, the, the, the same working model of partnering with a channel to help them understand across the uh, our footprint where the um, what the utilization for the different regions are, so that they could uh, focus the attention of the uh, deployment team and the training for these uh, for these report on the regions where there is a lower utilization but a large a number of, of, of leaders who, um, who had low utilization. Because if you want to move the needle, you want to focus on them first and then kind of walk your way down, down that list. So this is work that is ongoing, um, and, but it, it's, um, it's a great example of how we've expanded and, and scaled um, the, taking the same approach and, and working and embedding ourselves with um, the sales operation. So this is the slide I was referring to earlier. The reasons to believe, this is a lot more about Tableau prep than desktop. I think everybody uh, in the room is, is very familiar with uh, desktop. Autonomy is, is really the key uh, for me. The, the quick story about this is that for a different project, not this one, um, it, we needed to create, uh, to have a data set created. Uh, this was a data set for, uh, that included many more data sources than what uh, this, this involved. And we uh, reached out to the team that, within the company that owns a lot of those data sources. And unfortunately, we were denied the, because in the prioritization exercise that they go through, uh, it was not, uh, we didn't make the cut basically. Um, but luckily for me, by the time they denied us, I had found Tableau Prep. So I already built the flow <laughs> by the time uh, we got the, the, the denial. And I literally did not blink. I did not blink. You remember, Jim, no, when I walked into your office? I said, they denied us, but I already have the flow. So I'm just going to keep moving. I and said, why are we not on the top of the list? And, but you didn't blink. But I sure did. I, 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 that, was, that, was not a, that was not a problem. So having the autonomy, right? To, from the data management team or the data ops teams within your organization to have the data sets that you need is one of the key reasons to believe for me with Tableau Prep. Um, and there are times, it doesn't mean that you don't continue to work with them, but at times where the prior, their priorities is not aligned with your priorities, um, it is a great, it's a great tool to have in your toolkit. Um, it accelerates your speed to insight uh, because along the way you can troubleshoot, right? So one of the, our, our model of operating is to source, validate, and scale. With Tableau Prep, I can do the source and validation along the way. I don't have to wait until the data is created before I visualize it. At any point in my flow, I can, I can, I can, I can check. Uh, so that's great. Um, of course, the scalability piece I mentioned earlier, and is intuitive. Uh, I, I am a fast learner, and any tool that allows me to learn even faster than I already do is my friend. 
uh, is definitely one of the features of Tableau Prep. And as with any uh, tool that Tableau creates, it is user friendly. Um, they make it, they make it easy. They have a uh, they are very responsive in terms of the features, and it just an enjoyable experience all the way through. So these are my reasons to believe in Tableau Prep. If you are not uh, already using it as a tool, anything to add? No, I, I appreciate the, the story. Um, we're really excited to see where Salesforce and Tableau take the world. Um, we think there's un unlimited potential in terms of the work that you just saw here. I think we just scratched the surface in terms of the power of um, you know, those, those tools working uh, together. So uh, really appreciate um, Yasmin uh, and all of your hard work on, on this. Round of Thanks applause for your for guidance. You guys. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.